All right, welcome to Catholic Scripture Twisters episode 26. And in this episode, I want to talk about the Word of God, the Scriptures, the Bible, and the scribes that do the copying and translating of the Word of God. And talk about the Catholic Church's stance on the Bible. And it's weird that Catholics will say that the Catholic Church gave us the Bible, yet when people, namely Catholic priests, wanted to give the Bible to the people so that they can read it for themselves and translate the Bible into a common language so that they can all read it, the Catholic Church was against it, and not just against it. They would take these people and burn them alive. And what they translated, they would also burn with them. That's insane. That's not Christ-like at all. That's anti-Christ right there. That's anti-Christian. There's nothing that you can say or do to justify that. Right? It's just like uh, the fella who everybody talked to when... Paul was going to be taken by the Jews. And he said, Okay, okay, calm down, everybody. We've had a bunch of people rise up. And they just fall away. Right? Now, if this is of God, there's nothing you can do to stop it. So don't fight against him. And if it's not of God, it's just going to fall away. Right? Yet, here we have the Catholic Church fighting against the Bible being translated and being brought into German and English and burning those people alive who are translating it and burning the translations too. And at times, the people who got copies of this, they would be burned along with the copies that they had. This is not taking that advice at all. And it's interesting that they fought against this to stop the Bible from being translated. And it ends up they were fighting against God because it didn't come to naught. Because if it was God's will that it wouldn't happen, it wouldn't happen. But it did. So they found themselves fighting against God. Right? And I just want that to be in your mind here as we get into this here. And Jeremiah... Chapter 36, verses 26 through 32 is what I want to focus on here. I'm not going to read this through, save time. I'm just going to talk about it. It's right here. I'm not hiding it. Uh, you can read it for yourself or go to your Bible, to Jeremiah chapter 36. Check out verses 26 through 32. And uh, yeah, but here we read about a good scribe. We have Baruch the scribe and the prophet Jeremiah. And Baruch would write down everything that Jeremiah was saying. Right? And they ended up giving it to uh, this role to Jehoiakim, the king of Judah. But what did the king of Judah do? He burned it. You know, we see history repeating itself. The Catholic Church did the same thing, right? So Baruch had to rewrite it by the words of Jeremiah. And, uh, yeah, it didn't really stop anything. He was just trying to get away from what God said, much like Nebuchadnezzar, when told about the interpretation of the dream, didn't like it, and he went and tried to make a statue that was not of gold, silver, brass and iron and clay, he instead tried to make it all of gold. Right? You know, they fight against God. We see that people do that all the time. Even those who call themselves of God end up being the ones that fight against Him. Like we see uh, that a good chunk of the Jews did, at least their leadership did, in Jesus' day. Right? But then when we come over here to Jeremiah 37... We read about Jonathan, the scribe, 
and his place was made into a prison for Jeremiah. And he was mistreated in this prison. And it's just like what the Catholic Church did to people who were bringing the word of God to everybody. Right? And it's interesting that it's noticed that it has to do with Babylon as well. Uh, not something I want to get into in this. I want to focus more on the scribe part of this. But the point here is that we see two different scribes. Right? We have a scribe that's actually taking down the word of God. He's copying it down, translating it, giving it out. We have another scribe who's not doing that. Doesn't like what's coming from God, but instead is taking down what the high priest, what the king wants. So we have a twisted scribe, right? And when we actually go to Jeremiah chapter 8, he actually warns that scribes have been doing this, right? We see here in Jeremiah 8, 8, it says, How do we say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? Lo, certainly in vain made he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain, right? So we can take this as two things, right? One is that these people were copying and translating the Torah, right? The law of the Lord, the scriptures, the Old Testament Bible. But they were doing it in vain because the people were not reading it, they weren't believing it, they weren't accepting it, right? You can also take it as another vein, such as God says, don't take his name in vain. In other words, don't call yourself an Israelite, don't call yourself a Christian, if you're not going to take his name like a wife would take a husband's name and honor that name, you're going to just take the name so that you can just pretend you're of God and then go do whatever you want. And you basically turn God's name into trash, into a lie, into total BS. That's another way you can take what is going on here is that these scribes have made the law of the Lord vain, right? Uh, but we're actually going to take a look. There's a couple places where Jesus says this, but I figured I just need the one. You can also check it out in Luke where he talks about beware the scribes. The scribes are the scholars. Like we're reading here, these scribes, they're the ones who are actually copying the Bible and translating the Bible, right? He says to watch out for them, but he also gives a actual description of the ones you got to watch out for, right? They love to go in long clothing and love salutations in the marketplace and the chief seats in the synagogue or the churches and the uppermost rooms at feast, which devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. He shall receive greater damnation, right? What church has their... The scribes, they're, they're teachers of the law, of the, of the Bible, wearing the long clothes, love the salutations, sit in the chief seats, the churches, and not most rooms and feasts. And when they go out to different places, they, they get in the special sky boxes and stuff. And for pretense, make long prayers. And if you're not familiar with what this means, because I wasn't sure, because I always see pretense with an S, and I was like, what do they mean, pretense? So I had to actually look at it, and it's interesting. It's the, where Jesus says, beware of these uh, scribes and Pharisees because they're hypocrites. Hypocrites is actors, right? And one of the definitions here is the act of pretending. Right? They're just pretending like they're godly people. They're taking God's name in vain, right? A false display of affection, a claim, especially false one, right? Make believe or feigning, where Paul mentions about and Peter talk about these teachers who are going to come, who are going to win people over with feigning words. You know, they're fake. They're just telling you what you want to hear and making you think that they're Christian. Just like a politician makes you think that he's for you when he's for himself, right? False claim, allegation, pretext. Uh, less common word for pretension. And I like down here 
where it tells us a, a couple of things here, right? Uh, it's not natural, right? Because they're not naturally being themselves. They're being something else, right? Uh, you know, a betray, a betraying of friendship, right? An outward look that's misleading. And uh, I thought this was interesting because I'm pretty sure this is a secular website, but they show like a snake guy, somebody who's kind of satanic and reptilian, right? And that's pretty interesting that these people are connected with something satanic. And that's the whole point of what I wanted to make in this video is that we have uh, two lines of scriptures that are translated into the different languages, right? We have the Texas Receptus, and then we have these Alexandrian texts. And I made videos about it, so I'm just going to go over this briefly, and if you want more detail, you can check out those videos. But I talk about how the King James is the Bible we should trust, not only because it's the only one that's not copywritten, and that you can use it however you want, you can copy it, and use it into uh, music and videos and all this stuff and not have to deal with any kind of copyright infringement and having to pay royalties or anything, showing you that it's not owned by man, uh, but that it also comes from the right line of scriptures. You see, the Texas Receptus comes from Antioch, where Christians were first called Christians. Where things were really getting established there in Christianity was over at Antioch, which is kind of like a south eastern Turkey or a northern Israel, that kind of area. And that's where they were first called Christians, like I said, and they were putting together all these scriptures. Uh, that's where we get the Texas Receptus, and we don't have the originals of anything, obviously, but that's where they come from. And they're in Koine Greek, and that's where we translate the New Testament, right? Now, the thing is, is when you're taking something like this, like let's say this is your Bible right here. Uh, when you are copying it, and you are translating it, and you're using it for preaching, and your sermons and whatnot, it's going to get like this. It's going to get worn out, right? Where you're like, I can't even read this anymore. So you end up having to get rid of it. So you no longer have the original, but it doesn't matter. You still have a copy, right? Like when you go and you get a copy of the Bible, the King James Bible, or if you go get a copy of the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, and the Constitution, you don't have the original, but you're not like, oh, I can't rely on this because it's not the original. You have copies. So even if the original was ruined, there's a bunch of people with copies of the Declaration of Independence Bill of Rights and the Constitution. It's not as if it's lost if the original is gone because it's so worn out, right? Nobody's going to say these copies are not, uh, we can't trust them. Then why can't you? You can compare them to the original right now so that we know that we have thousands upon thousands, if not millions of copies all over the United States and probably other places as well with the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights and Constitution, right? So we have that same thing with the Bible. Copies, where we all, oh, we know this is the original because we see the original. Not only that, we have the people alive saying these words, so we know it's their words. So we make a bunch of copies of what they said, what they wrote down, and everybody can have it. And there's no reason to doubt that this is the truth, right? So you end up getting thousands and thousands and thousands of these copies, and that's what you have with the Texas Receptus. you got thousands of these copies of different manuscripts. But then you have on the other side here the Alex, what they call the Alexandrian texts. Now, the, there's not many texts there. Uh, I think they got like tens, not even hundreds of manuscripts. Tens is like 40 manuscripts or so. Uh, so they don't even have as many manuscripts as the Texas Receptus. With the Texas Receptus, they have thousands of manuscripts and they all agree, except for minor points where there might be some kind of misspelling, a word missing, or something like that. There's not a big discrepancy. But with just these few 40 texts for the Alexandrian texts, you can find thousands 
of discrepancies where they don't agree in different Gospels. In the Gospels alone, there's thousands of differences. Yet for some reason, they want to use the Alexandrian text from Egypt, not from Antioch, where the Christians were established, but from the south, some other place where they weren't established, right? And not only that, but... Uh, I my had a little brain fart there, sorry. Uh, for some reason, they, they take these manuscripts and they say that they are more trustworthy because they're older, right? As if that makes sense. All right, so take this as a, an example here. Let's just cut this down the middle. Let's say over here we have a NIV or ESV. Bible over here, New Living Translation right here. And on this side is a King James. Now, let's say I have all four of the Bibles. Over here is an NIV, ESV, and a New Living Translation, and I have a King James over here. Now, I'm like, these ones are trash, so I don't use them. They're missing a bunch of verses. They, they changed uh, doctrine through their translation. I don't trust them. I don't use them. They're copywritten. They're of man. I don't. I don't use them. So they're just sitting on the bookshelf. This King James is all worn out, right? And it's so worn out, can't even be used. So it ends up being tossed out. But let's say I bought all these Bibles in the same year, like the year 2000, just to make it simple here. And we know we can date and we can figure out when these books were purchased, right? They're all made and distributed in the year 2000. That's the dates are even printed on the on the books. And then here it is, 2022, and I got another King James over here, and it's new, and I'm using it. It's still getting worn out, but I'm I'm using a new Bible because the old one got ruined. Just because these other other ones are older does not make them better, right? Let's say it's been uh, 60 years now, and I have to get a new one. So here we are in 2082, and I got a new, brand new King James Bible, and somebody comes in the house, and they're like, oh, this is from 2082, but this one is from 2000. These ones are from 2000. These ones are better to use, because they're older. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't. You see, the reason why this one's older is because the originals were being used so much, and copied so much, and translated so much, that they were unusable. But it doesn't matter because you have all the copies. You have all the translations. And you've got them copied and translated into different languages where you can back translate from the different languages that we know now too. And we can see that the Texas Receptus is the way to go. But just because over here it's older, such as the Alexandrian text, it's older because people didn't use it. If they were actually using it and copying and translated, it would have been worn out. But you see, people don't look into these things. They don't think about these things. They just go, oh, I find this version easier to read. And that's just what they go with. They got real no respect and honor for the word of God. They got no exaltation to it. It's just like, a whatever. A Bible's a Bible. And they... They don't seem to get it. So I'm just making this video uh, to show you got to watch out. Watch out for the scribes. You got good ones and uh, you got bad ones. Jesus tells you even to be aware of them, that they're fake. Right? So anyway, thanks for watching.